We know the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends keeping your baby in your room for between six and 12 months, but every family is going to make a different choice based on their own preferences. With that being said, we are going to talk today all about how parents and babies can room share successfully. Now, in addition to the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendations, some families have to room share because of other things like not having enough rooms for the baby or just having a very small compact space and needing to share a room with their baby. Other stipulations can include that the baby and a bigger sibling are going to need to share a room together and parents might want the baby sleeping better before they have the baby and toddler or bigger kid sharing a room. And other families just enjoy room sharing with their baby, but maybe you're just not getting the most sleep or maybe you're just landing on this video because you want to make sure you're doing the best thing for your baby, yourself, and sleep for your whole family. Now before we even jump into tips on room sharing with your baby, I want you to know that there is a lot more information on sleep in the first three to four months with your baby in my newborn sleep course. So grab the link in the description box down below and get access, it's lifetime access, to the Slumber and Bloom newborn sleep course. This is not not a sleep training course. This is all about establishing healthy sleep habits and also about becoming a parent. So make sure you grab that newborn sleep course in the description box down below. Tip number one when it comes to room sharing with a baby is to put your baby on the opposite side of the room than your bed. Now of course, in the very first month, your baby is probably waking every two to three hours to eat and to need a diaper change. But after that, you really can put a little bit more space in between yourself and your baby. A lot of times, parents will want the baby right next to the mom so that she can have easy access to the baby to feed or change or burp or help put a passy back in or just put their hand on their baby. But a lot of times, that is too close proximity. And you have to think of it this way. If you're sharing a bed with your spouse and you can feel them rolling over in the middle of the night or you can feel them getting up and getting out of bed to go to the bathroom, your baby is hearing all of the same things. So if you put a little bit of space in between you and your baby, then they're going to be able to sleep a little bit more soundly with less distractions. Now here are a couple ideas that I've gotten from some of my clients in the past. Some families have a very large, well-ventilated walk-in closet that is more like another room in their house and less like a closet. So they put the baby in a pack and play in the closet. Now, I have to put the disclaimer out there that this closet needs to be well-ventilated and it really should only be in a well ventilated area. Obviously baby should not be left in an enclosed closet to sleep that is not a safe situation so I am really only referring to those very large closets. But the purpose in doing this is to give the baby a little bit of space. So not only will the baby not be able to hear you and feel you every time you're moving but babies can smell you. They can sense the scent, <laughs> that's hard to say, they can sense the scent <laughs> that is on specifically mom, but they know when you're near, and when you're near, they wanna be like cuddling and holding, being like being held, and who wouldn't wanna be cuddled and held all night long? I certainly know I would like to be. Tip number two is to put a physical barrier between yourself and your baby. Now, if your baby is sleeping in a pack and play, you can get a slumber pod to put on top of the pack and play, and not just on top, it goes completely over the pack and play so that not only does your baby have a physical barrier but they also have a blackout situation. I know a lot of parents bedrooms do not have blackout curtains so this is a great alternative that will give your baby not only the physical barrier but also those blackout sleep conditions. Another thing you can do if getting a slumber pod is not an option for you, you can get a privacy screen. I've also seen people do like some crazy wild things with shower curtains or just like extra bed sheets or window curtains and actually like putting an actual barrier between themselves and their children. Something I told one of my clients last week, she's an influencer on Instagram and I know that these, um, what are they called, influencers, have a lot of photography tools. So if you're a photographer or an influencer 
um, and you have a green screen, you can definitely set that up between you and your baby so that there's at least some divide and you could always get like fancy with the kind of fabric or screen whatever backdrop that you put on there. So it's always like another fun way to just kind of like get creative and figure out a way to put a physical barrier between yourself and your baby. The third thing that you can do is to double up on white noise. Now we've already talked about putting some space in between you and your baby. So there will be some space to put a white noise machine by your baby and a white noise machine by you. So that is going to drown out all the noise and just making sure that it is within the appropriate decibels for a baby. What you can do to test the decibels on your child's white noise is to use an app. Now every single time that I go to an in-home sleep consultation, I use a decibel meter on my cell phone. And what I do is I open up the decibel meter and I place it where the baby's head lies while they're sleeping. Now of course if you have a more mobile child, then it's going to be different. You want to put it in the middle of the crib. But if they're not very mobile and they're not rolling over or you know kind of circulating around the crib, then you can just you can put it in one spot where you're laying your baby's head. And what you want to do is make sure that with the white noise on, even if you have two white noise machines going, have both of them on, place the decibel meter where you need to test it and make sure that it falls between 50 and 60 decibels. Now, right now I'm talking and just at my talking uh, volume, I am between like 60 and 70. You're probably watching the numbers go more than I am because I'm talking to you and not to my phone. So definitely don't feel like you can't double up on white noise. You can 110% do that. Tip number four is to pause before responding to your child. This magic pause is something that I'm going to talk about in another video. If it's already up, you will see it pop up right here in your iCards. If it's not, then I will come back and I will let you know when that video is up. But you need to make sure that you pause before you tend to your child. It takes the brain five minutes to realize that it's awake. So sometimes your baby is crying out when they're transitioning from one sleep cycle to the next. And because you're right there and you literally hear every little thing, you may think that you need to help your child when in all reality, they're not even fully awake. And then you tending to them actually wakes them up. So pause before you go to your child, try to give them five to 10 minutes of just doing their own thing and then you can go help them and support them in whichever way they need. But you always wanna give them a chance to go back to sleep on their own first. Tip number five is to keep it dark. Stay off your phone and don't turn on the TV. If you're doing an overnight, middle of the night feeding or diaper change, I want you to keep it as dim as possible. You can use one of those tap lights right next to your bed and just have it very dim, but the more light that you're letting in the room, the more your child is going to wake up and struggle to go back to sleep, especially after 4 a.m. when they are no longer producing melatonin and it is just going to be very, very hard for them to fall back asleep. So you want to keep it as dark and quiet as possible as if you live in a cave. Now, if you fell on this video and you are ready to stop room sharing with your baby, I want you to check out this video right here on tips on how to transition your baby to their own crib and their own nursery. And don't forget that if you're ready for more baby sleep advice and just mom life advice in general and making that transition to motherhood, check out my newborn sleep course in the description box down below and keep blooming. Mwah.